Okay, hi guys and welcome to Norwegian Modeling Bench and this first video of tips and tricks. So today I would like to talk a bit about the tools that I use at least for working with uh, Photo Edge or PE. Uh, I will talk a bit about getting the PE off the fret, cleaning the PE to make it ready for banding and shaping. Banding and shaping of course, then gluing and then preparing uh, the PE for painting. So these are of course my suggestions and my ways of doing it and tools that I prefer. Uh, and I hope that it will give you a bit of an insight into how I do stuff at least. So there's been a lot of questions and I uh, would like to summarize this all in a video. So if we start with the, with the PE itself, what is it? Well, uh, you have both brass and steel PE at least. Um, so these are etched out and you will find them in, in different thicknesses and def definitely different qualities as well. So these are Pontos um, uh, frets and this is an example of trumpeter uh, fret. Uh, and there is a huge difference in the quality of the metal itself and of course also the detailing that is being done on the fret. So I definitely like to, to work with uh, Pontos KA uh, white ensign uh, type of uh, detail offsets. So the next uh, thing that you need to worry about is how to get the PE off the fret. Uh, in the case of steel, uh, it requires a bit more work and it, it definitely is um, heavy on the tools. Uh, but uh, of course it has its applications where you don't want the PE to bend as much and uh, where you want to have of course a steel look finish. Um, in situations where you want to get um, the PE parts off the fret I'm using just a regular um, exacto knife or a curved blade knife like this and uh, I usually cut things directly on the cutting mat. I know a lot of people say that you shouldn't do this but uh, I have found that it's perfectly fine in most cases. Uh, for parts that are very fragile you should definitely use like a ceram ceramic tile or a glass plate which I have on my right side and I use that for for tiny parts that I'm afraid of. So the next thing after you have removed the parts from the fret uh, you will have small tags coming from the fret and this is where a diamond file comes in handy. And you have these in different shapes and sizes. Uh, I definitely prefer the 400 file from uh, Tamiya. And um, these are also nice in the cases where you want or need to uh, adjust the parts. So making them fit into corners or, or take off a bit, uh, kind of shave off a bit to, to make them fit. So these are definitely a must, I would say. Um, so something to have in the toolbox. After the part has been cleaned and uh, you're ready to, to bend or shape it, you need some kind of tools. So the first thing is um, having a bending tool like this where you can um, put the fret into under these um, slots and have pressure to keep it in place and then use these um, to band up and, and shape it in. So if you need a perfect uh, line and a perfect 90 degree uh, and especially if the PE is fragile, uh, for example for stairs and, and so on, then this is an invaluable tool to have. Um, 
and I use um, these type of tools to, to bend with and just a blade that uh, has been used before so it's not as sharp as from out of the box. Then a plier is definitely something that you should have to bend um, smaller things and things that are you, you don't need the bending tool for. Uh, uh, for some parts you would also be better off with a smaller type of tool like this. So it's more like a tweezer but it is made to, um, to bend PE. Um, in some cases you might need to, to cut off something and it, it is a rough tool, but uh, having a photo etch uh, scissor is, uh, is a good thing, at least, I think so. Um, and then, of course, tweezers. And again, all of these are Tamiya products. I definitely prefer them, in both in terms of quality, quality and uh, versatility. Um, and I have I like to have two of these at hand. Sometimes you get a bit of glue on on the tweezer and uh, then it's just to, to switch around and other times you, you need to be able to do operations with both hands. So I definitely like to have, have two available. Uh, in some cases you might also bend things that you wouldn't like to bend inadvertently, then these are also good in those cases. So you can use um, the plier to, to make the parts flat again. And then you have cases where you need to, to, to bend the PE, you need to uh, make them adhere to curves and so on. For example, the gun tubs on the CV6. Uh, Use whatever you have at hand. You can use like drill bits. You can use handles on brushes. I often use the handle on the on the knife and batteries. Anything really that is uh, suitable for the curve that you want to make. And usually you you need something that is a bit smaller. Uh, so you make a, a tighter curve because the PE will flex back a bit. Which leads into the other thing, annealing. Um, I usually do not anneal that much. I only anneal if, um, if the PE is very thick, if I need to have curves going in both directions. Uh, or the PES does not have any preparations for um, for bending uh, often for example with, with pontos they have grooves on the back side so it makes the bending a lot easier but otherwise it is good to have a small candle in place and just be careful carefully annealing the part letting it cool off and then bend then it will uh, keep the shape a lot better and of course it is easier to bend, but at the same time, if you don't need to anneal it, then, then why do it? Then there is of course also a lot of small tiny parts when working with PE, uh, especially when uh, you're working in 350 scale or, or even smaller. Then you need something to, to magnify. So I am using uh, these magnifier visors a lot. Uh, I think they are indispensable really when, when working with uh, small PE and when you're placing things, smaller things, painting like small figures and so on. It, it, it's really an invaluable tool. So after the parts are ready, to be uh, added to uh, your model, you need to glue, of course. Um, and you need a proper CA glue, super glue to do this. I would definitely recommend uh, VMS glue, the Flexi 5K. 
um, they have both the, the CA4PE and um, they also have extra thin. I definitely prefer working with thin. It makes uh, placing things uh, a lot easier and um, you don't get too much excess PE when, when adding it. Um, so I, I like to, to work with those. I also use this um, lens holder. So using daily lenses comes with a benefit of not both just seeing, uh, but also getting a lot of these plastic holders, which is uh, good for um, both uh, mixing paint, but also having uh, extra thin glue in, uh, in the holder and uh, regular PE on, on the side. And then using uh, just a regular toothpick to, to add it to, um, to the, to either the piece or to the, um, to the model itself. For bigger pieces where you need uh, some more positioning time, then I use E6000. This um, has a lot more open time, so we were able to uh, position the, uh, the parts uh, and it's not like it's, it's going to glue down and, and uh, bond immediately, but you have a couple of minutes at least before it's starting to settle. And, but it has also a 24 hour drying time. Um, and working with larger pieces of PE, you should also uh, score the backside, so sanding the backside, so, uh, so the glue has um, more grip. And that applies, of course, regardless if you're going to use E6000 or, or super glue, or even more if you have, are not using E6000, I would say. Um, and then that's, a, yeah, just use regular sanding stick or sanding paper, doesn't really matter. Um, and then if you have seen my videos, I also use a lot of reverse tweezers during these operations, so I don't need to to position things. So if I'm going to to uh, to glue two parts together, I then use a reverse tweezer to to hold them in place. Um, so after you have been gluing, you need to uh, clean up, and this is where you need to have or should have a glass fiber pen. Um, so let, don't let the, the CE dry too much, then start rubbing, uh, away the, the excess CA. Uh, with the, the VMS glue, I've also found that it's quite easy to actually use a, a knife as well to remove excess part, uh, excess, uh, CA. Uh, but then you need to be a bit more careful so you don't uh, damage the parts. Otherwise, of course, you have also CA debonders that you can use, and the one from VMS is actually quite good. Um, but I haven't used that too much, but if you get a lot of extra spill and you, you really need to get that removed, then that is definitely an option. Of course, soldering is also uh, something that you can do to, to bond things together. Uh, I'm not very experienced with soldering PE yet, so I will hold back on this until I feel that my skill level is, is good enough to, to work uh, on the models with and definitely before I can present something on that part for you. So uh, then we have come to the point where you have glued your parts on, you're ready to start painting. And before painting, you definitely need to prime and you need uh, a metal primer as an undercoat for, for the primer, meaning you have two primers, at least that's what I, I think yields the best results. 
So I am using um, Tamiya again, metal primer. Uh, in most cases, at least when there are big parts and uh, a lot of area that needs to be covered. Otherwise, uh, I have also used a bit of a Mr. Metal Primer. And if I really need a good hold, then I have also started using the VMS Metal Prep 4K, which, has, uh, which gives a really good bond for, for the paint. Also, uh, remember to, if you have a lot of uh, finger marks on, uh, on the, uh, the, the PE, you should also degrease. Uh, so using either uh, rubbing alcohol, something alcoholic at least, not, not, not a drink or gin and tonic, um, but something to, to remove the grease. Uh, otherwise, you might ruin the, the end result. So when the metal primer has uh, dried, uh, I prefer using this primer from AK Interactive. I think it yields very good results. It's also a micro filler. So any of those tiny uh, scratch marks and so on will, uh, will be covered by the micro filler. Um, and these come, these come in uh, black, gray, and white. So, and the last tool that is very vital when working with PE is patience. Just spend time, get things right. Um, if you don't like what you have done, do it over. Just snap off the part, remove the CA, so you can get a fresh start, try again. That is uh, probably the best advice I have for you guys. So yeah, that's it, I guess, for this uh, video. I hope that you uh, like this one and um, I will uh, make some of more of these over time when I figure out that there is something that I should make a special video about. So keep safe until next time.